Bonjour, YouTube world. <laughs> so as you can see, Sophie's not here today and it's me. And today we're gonna talk a little bit about lithium. 10 years ago, a friend slash roommate and I, we started a electric bike company called Hilltopper. And long story short, we got really good at batteries and power systems for those bikes. We even started doing research in lithium chemistry and started working with some universities. Because of that and all the expertise, knowledge that we got from it, we started an offshoot company called Dakota Lithium. That's the battery you see in front of me today. And with that, I got a lot of knowledge in lithium. And today I wanna to share that knowledge with you. Today, we're gonna to talk about a few different things. The first is we're gonna talk about the benefits of lithium. The second is we're gonna talk about the different types of lithium. There's many types of lithium batteries out there. And just to avoid some confusion, I'm gonna explain some of those types and talk about their benefits and drawbacks. The next thing we're gonna look at is price. Price is always a big thing when talking about lithium. So we're gonna break down some pricing of lithium batteries versus lead acid batteries and then the last thing we're going to touch on is installation of lithium we're going to do a full another video on how we actually install these lithium batteries aboard polar seal but we'll just touch on a few key points when thinking about installation of lithium batteries lithium is great I am a massive proponent of lithium batteries. The first benefit is just the pure size. So if we take this 170 amp hour lithium battery and compare it to 140 amp hour lead acid battery like we have on Polar Seal today, we'll find that the size is roughly, it's about half the size. So this case is around half the size as my 140 amp hour lead acid case. Then if we compare the weight, and weight is such an important bit on a sailboat. In this battery, the 170 is around 21 kilograms. If we compare that to the lead acid, the 140 amp hour that we have on the boat today, that battery is 36 kilograms, and it's not even the full power potential of this battery. The next benefit is useful power. And what do I mean by useful power? If we look at the 140 amp hour lead acid battery that we have on Polar Seal, I should only be using about half of its rated powers. And the reason is, is that the chemicals and the chemistry inside of the cells of the battery are such that if I use it all the way down, if I take that battery from 100% down to 0%, I can damage the cells permanently. With lithium, it's a little different. I can use around 95% of the rated power of the battery. So that means I can take it from 100% down to about 5%. Now I'm using almost the full 170 amp hours of this rated lithium battery, as opposed to 50% or 70 amp hours of the 140 lead acid battery. What does that mean for us? Well, if I wanna get a full 140 amp hours from my old lead acid batteries, I actually have to have two of them. Whereas this, I just get to keep the one. So we have a less size, less weight, and I get to use the full amount of potential power that's in the battery. That ain't gonna work out with. The next big benefit is cycles. That's how many times I can take the battery from a full charge down to the 5% charge in the case of lithium. With lithium, we can cycle these batteries somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 times. With a lead acid battery, they can only be cycled around 400 times before we start seeing a big degradation in useful power. So these batteries are gonna last a lot longer than the lead acid batteries. Another benefit of lithium is the temperature range. A lead acid battery has much smaller temperature range in terms of high temperature and low temperature operating profile as opposed to a lithium, which is much bigger. The benefit to that is that we can leave these lithium batteries in the boat over winter. We can even use them over winter and they'll be just fine. Another positive of lithium is the charge time. The difference in chemicals between a lead acid battery and a lithium battery is such that lead acid we are a little restricted on how fast we can actually charge the battery. With lithium batteries, the only thing that is restricting us is the battery management system inside. And I'll talk about that a little bit later, what that is. With lithium batteries, we can charge them a lot faster than lead acid. So now, instead of having 280 amp hours of lead acid, I have 510 amp hours of lithium. I get to use the full amount and I get to cycle it around 2,500 times. I have a lot more power on my boat and I have a lot less weight and I have a lot less size. It's one reason I'm so excited to install it in Polar Seal. In the boating industry, the battery that is typically found is LFP or lithium iron phosphate. 
It can be written as LFP, it can be written as LIFEPO4. These are the types of batteries that you'll find on boats and in marine stores. But there's another type of battery called NMC, nickel magnesium cobalt. There can be many variations of the nickel magnesium cobalt, but just for the purposes of this, because it's not a chemistry lesson, uh, we're just gonna call it NMC. And we would want to use these two types of batteries for different things. NMC, it's got a much higher energy density ratio. In general, we like to say there's about 20% higher energy density out of NMC versus LFP. That's one reason we find NMC inside of cell phones, inside of high performance cars or vehicles. Uh, it has to do with the energy density. Uh, well, then you may be asking, well, if we're talking about weight, why don't we just put NMC on my boat? Well, we've all seen videos of somebody's cell phone bursting into pocket or a Tesla car crashed into a tree and on fire. The reason that that happens with NMC is because NMC produces oxygen while it's going through its chemical electrical process. So if something happens to the NMC, if the battery management system breaks or if somebody fires a bullet into the battery and the fire starts, that oxygen will just keep feeding the fire. LFP does not produce oxygen during its chemical process. So if something happens, there might be a little bit of smoke, there might be a little off gassing, but the big ball of fire bursting, as you see from an electric car crashing into a tree, it just won't happen. That brings us to the next question. Is lithium safe for my boat? The first thing we need to remember when talking about that is anything dealing with electricity or anything dealing with batteries comes with a risk. So the lead acid battery that I have in my boat today can spill battery acid, it can swell, it can off gas. In extreme cases, there could be a battery fire. That risk doesn't go away with lithium. But what we do to limit the risk is first off on boats, you'll generally find this lithium iron phosphate chemistry. Uh, but the other bit is the inclusion of a thing called a battery management system. The BMS or the battery management system is typically found inside the battery. And what it is is a piece of electronics that's constantly monitoring all the cells. So the battery is made up a bunch of cells that look like this, and they're all wired together inside, and the battery management system is on top of it. There's about three purposes of the system. The first is provide balancing. So we want to make sure the voltage is the same across all the cells. The next piece is it's limiting high voltage situations. So if the voltage gets too high in a battery, we produce a lot of heat. And if there's a lot of heat going on, that's a case that can cause a bad situation. Or in the case of LFP, we get a little bit of smoke or you might smell something like an apple smell. What will happen in that case is the battery management system will shut down either the charge or it will shut down the output of the battery. So if the voltage is too high, the battery management system will just shut it down. Or the third situation is if the voltage is too low. The issue with lithium is that the voltage gets too low, we can actually damage the chemistry of the powder found inside of these cells. And that in itself is not a problem. The problem is when we go to charge the battery again. So if the voltage got too low and we damage the cell and then we go to charge it again, the voltage could then get too high and then we produce a lot of heat and we run into the same problems. That is the purpose of the battery management system. It's monitoring the voltage levels, high voltage, low voltage, how much amp, if there are too many amps coming in at once or too many amps leaving at once, the battery management system will monitor all of those things. So yes, lithium can be safe on a boat if it's installed correctly correctly and has the correct BMS associated with it. So now on to price. And voila, now we have both batteries in front of me. So this is the lead acid battery from Polar Seal, the 140 amp hour lead acid. And the one on my left here is the Dakota Lithium 170 amp hour battery. So as I said before, this battery is 140 amp hours and this one is 170 amp hours so right away you can see this one's got a little bit more power than this one and the size well there is quite a bit of a size difference so the 140 amp hours equates to roughly 16 80 watts and this one is 2040 and there's a reason that we're putting that number up and i'll get to that in a second this next number is the price and that's the thing that people are the most interested in the lead acid here the 140 retails for around 200 dollars us dollars 
The Dakota Lithium here retails for $1,700. And that is usually the big sticking point with Lithium. The upfront price is just so much higher than the lead acid. So the reason I put the watt hours up there and the way we get that is taking the amp hours times by the voltage. I have found that the best way to compare batteries is looking at price per watt hour. So the price that it costs per each watt hour of the battery. So if we look at price per watt hour of this lead acid battery, we see that the price per watt hour is around 11 cents. The price for the lithium battery is roughly 83 cents. So again, it is pretty big difference per watt hour. But if you remember earlier in the video, I talked about the useful power, the available power from each battery. So for this lead acid 170 amp hour battery, we're only able to use around 70 amp hours of the battery. Otherwise we risk damaging the chemistry. We don't have that restriction with the lithium. So we need to take that into account with pricing. So in order for me to get a full 140 amp hours out of this battery, I need to have two of them. We'll call that equal usage, equal power usage. And if we double that, it's gonna be 22 cents per watt hour. Whereas with the lithium, still 83 cents. Still, we're not on a level playing field. The last bit that we need to compare is cycles. If you remember me saying this lead acid has between four and 500 cycles before it really starts to degrade. For full-time cruisers, that's maybe a year or two. For weekend sailors, it could be a few more years. Then you'll need to replace the battery. The lithium batteries have between two and 3,000 cycles. So if we say this is 400 and this is 2,500 cycles, that's about a six times difference. So over the lifespan, I'm gonna need about six of these batteries to create one of these. So we'll take that into account for cycles. And now if we do the math there, we'll find that all of the sudden, this one comes to $1.44 price per watt hour, and the lithium stays at 83 cents. The long-term cost benefit of lithium really starts to take shape. And the good news with lithium is the prices are going down. Every day, every month, the prices are getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And at the moment, these Dakotas that I'm working with, they're one of the cheaper batteries on the market. The BMS is included inside. You don't have to buy any other external BMS or other hardware, it's all included. So the last bit I wanna leave you with is the installation. And we're gonna make another YouTube video on how we actually installed the lithium batteries on Polar Seal. We're gonna show you the battery compartment, how we rewired everything, how we programmed the chargers. So all of that is coming in a follow-up video on how we install the lithium. But one thing I'll leave you with regarding installation is you may hear a term drop-in replacement. So what that means is that we just take out the lead acid battery and we put in the lithium battery. And that's not always the full story. Most of the time when you put lithium in, you do need to make sure that the chargers can either handle lithium or you may have to change a charger setting. Alternatively, if you have solar on the boat and you have MPP chargers, they may need to be adjusted. There's always a little bit of work you're gonna have to do to make sure the lithium is set up correctly and it will charge correctly on your boat. So we'll show you all of that in the next YouTube video, which is coming. I'm very excited to do it. And Sophie's excited too. Sophie also also gets to pick up this heavy ass battery and put it back in the box after the video is done. So I hope you enjoyed the lithium video. As you can see, the background has changed. Uh, Sophie and I took a little trip with my family to Hawaii for a little polar seal break. But in the next month, we're gonna be back on polar seal and I'm going to be installing the lithium batteries and we're gonna film it from start to finish and put it out there for you guys. So hopefully that will be some more insightful information for you. If you wanna give lithium batteries a try, you can go to dakotalithium.com and use promo code Ryan and Sophie for a 10% discount. So feel free to visit and, and look up our batteries if you're interested. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. We really appreciate all our subscribers out there. So I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.
would not use this for workout. 